Hi, my name is Esther. We're going to keep this intro brief. If Jesus and Walk with Christ is something that interests you, feel free to join along. Today we're going to be looking at Numbers chapter 36, and in this first part we'll be looking more specifically at verses 1 to 4. So let's get started. I'm looking down by the way, referring to my notes. Now in the beginning section, I'm breaking these down into three main sections. The beginning will look at verses 1 to 4, the middle portion will look at verses 5 to 8, and the end portion of chapter 36 will be looking at verses 9 to 13. This is the first part, so let's go ahead and analyze verses 1 through 4. So these set of verses involve a few key players. The Lord God, the chief of the fathers, Moses and Zelophehad's daughters. Now Zelophehad's daughters are mentioned earlier in the book of Numbers, and they are five in total. Their names are Mela, Tirza, Hagla, Milka, and Noah. So what's going on? Jesus, please help me with everything that's trying to become a roadblock. So now that we have their names, let's look at what is going on here in these four verses. Well, uh, the chief of the fathers were approaching Moses concerning the word of the Lord that went out about Zelophehad's daughters and their inheritance of land. And earlier in Numbers, we saw that God granted them the right to inherit their father's land because Zelophehad only had daughters. He didn't have sons. And it was a custom that the males would be the inheritors of land. Earlier we saw that God ruled that it was right that the daughters would be the inheritors of this land so that it would stay within that family. Now, the chief of the fathers of the family stated that if Zelophehad's daughters were to get married, then that land which was inherited to them from Zelophehad would have then become part of that other tribe that they married into because God had already ordained that then Zelophehad's land passed on to his daughters by the word of the Lord God would risk, as they state in verse 3 here in this beginning verse, the following, and if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received, so shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. I'm reading from the King James Version, but basically they're saying, well, if they get married to another tribe of the children of Israel, then we risk losing that land that was inherited to them because as I mentioned again, the custom was that males were the inheritors of land. It wasn't usual that women owned land, but at this time, it's rare for women to be owning land in general. Right here, we see that God is ordaining this. Let's go on. This all is occurring by the plains of Moab near Jericho. And this happened when the chief of the fathers sought to ensure that Zelophehad's land remained within the tribe. It wasn't a requirement that Zelophehad's daughters got married, but they state in verse 3, if they be married, then what would happen? And so this is what Moses was addressing by the word of the Lord. The way this happened was that the chief of the fathers of the children of Gilead spoke before Moses, the princes, and along with the chief of the fathers of the children in Israel, meaning the other tribes as well. So now let's get into why this all happened. This occurred so that Zelophehad's inheritance would continue. Not only that, Lord God's ruling on Zelophehad's land was not just an exception to the rule, but it set the precedence. It was essentially a biblical landmark case of its time. We'll see more about this in the coming verses, but let's go ahead and take a brief journey back to Numbers chapter 27 verses 7 to 11 to see why this is such a landmark case. So reading from verse 7, the Bible says, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. So this is the Lord God speaking concerning what was going on in Numbers chapter 27. 
So for context, in Numbers chapter 27, Zilofi had was part of the tribe of Manus. Uh, specifically, he was the son of Gilead, but he had died and he only had five daughters. So then it was a question of who was going to inherit this land. So Lophehad's daughters came before Moses and wanted to have their petition heard. And the Lord God gave the response through Moses. And this was the verdict. Let's read it in verses 7 to 11. Actually, going back, and I'll add verse 6 because it adds context in, as to who's saying what. Verse 6, beginning from there, it says, And the Lord God spoke unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Alrighty, like what I mentioned before, the landmark case that it is. Here we see a divine law being enacted that not only is it right that what Zabofi had's daughters were requesting, but it became the standard part of the foundational law. Going on, let's read some more. Let's go on to verse 9. And if he have no daughter, speaking more on this matter, verse 9 says, And if he have no daughter, then he shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. So if this person that dies has no son or daughter, then pass it on to his brethren. And verse 10 goes on to say, And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. Now, this man also not only doesn't have sons or daughters, but if he has no, no brothers either or anybody, then that will go the land is to go into his father's brethren. And finally, let's read in verse 11. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. So we'll see here that Moses was a mouthpiece for God speaking to the children of Israel. So the verdict that was being spoken of came from God first and through Moses, the children of Israel understood what was the, the statute. Now let's look a little bit more into what the word statute means. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of the word statute is a law enacted by the legislative branch of a government. The second definition is an act of a corporation or of its founder intended as a permanent rule. With that understanding here, this statute was a permanent rule that not only was the inheritance to be passed on to Zelophehad's daughters, but this was to be a permanent rule for all of Israel. The reason why I wanted to point this out was I was previously under the notion that, wow, inheriting land and women owning land isn't a strange concept in the Bible, in fact, God himself enacted it into law. So this is a common misconception in mainstream thought that the Bible is antiquated and, and isn't fair to women. What we see here is a fair judgment, is a fair ruling on behalf of women, not only for their benefit, but for the benefit of generations to come after them. So I think this is a really cool study and praise God. So if you really like this video, want to stay up to date when I post the next video, subscribe. And until next time, God bless you.